Good afternoon. Um, good evening, actually. Now, welcome to episode six nine nine <laughs> nine sixty eight. Get in the right order there. Um, today, I want to do a little talk about um, transitions. Um, I, I titled it something like uh, "Letting um, Letting Go, Moving On, Feeling All the Emotions," something like that. Um, because I basically I was in the memoir this afternoon, a very interesting one. Um, basically. Right, let, me, let me give you what happened so you know what I'm talking about. Um, a friend I had known not very well in sense because we were basically vo fellow volunteer phone captains at the radio, our local radio station, KCRW, for 15, 20 years, something like that. So we'd done it for a long time, but we see each other twice a year, for six, you know, every six months. And we haven't seen each other for like four years because the press drive ended. We stopped doing them. But anyway, so he passed away about three weeks ago and we had a memorial. Hi, Jan, nice to see you. So the memorial, like, gathering at the radio station today this afternoon as far as I was a bit late getting to my Facebook live and it was an interesting experience melancholy for a lot of people yes I didn't feel as deep because I wasn't as connected to him as other people were so even though a lot of people have been saying you know sending my their condolences I appreciate that but I really would pass it on to those people who are much more deeply affected but I brought up the thought about this journey we have for this part of life because part of life is dying yes sorry to be melancholy well, it's not melancholy but Maudling in a sense, because yes, we do, excuse me, we ate well, by the way, <laughs> they fed us well. Um, and actually, you'll, you'll see on my profile the next, probably tonight and tomorrow, lots of pictures showing up, people taking pictures together, so a lot of stuff is going on. And it was really wonderful to be together with people, because because a lot of us hadn't seen each other in like three or four years since the last pledge drive. In fact, we already sort of vowed to meet up again, because the last time anybody else in the group met up was for somebody else who passed away. It was surprising that he had a, he died of cancer. This one... Brent was somebody who um, everyone was so stunned by. He was in his early 40s. And from what I heard, I, I don't know exactly the details, but I, I suspect it was, I believe it was, I believe it was natural causes. It wasn't anything, like, it wasn't an accident. It was something that happened just the way he was. But he lived life fully. And he was very expressive. And in some ways, I regret not actually spending more time with him. Because the stories people were telling were pretty cool. And it was a sense of the memories we, we, we leave behind with people. So that's part of the question I was going to ask you is like, you know, what memories are you planting with other people that when, when it happens, how will people remember you? Do you make a positive impact? Do you make a negative impact? Do you not make any impact? You know, that sort of question. So that's one thing to think about. Secondly, I felt the emotional in a way. I mean, I'm, I'm an empath in some ways, so I definitely feel stuff when it comes up. And hearing people share the stories, both there were people who were, there's actually his sister was there because his family's from back east. His sister was there, his mother was there. Um, one of his college buddies was there from way back when he was younger and actually a neighbor you, you knew when he was like when she was like three years old so a range of people from that part and a bunch of people from UCLA where he was um, studying he was doing, or teaching studying or something like that and a bunch of people from KCOW so like three at least three different groups there and we're all mingling connecting hanging out but the stories people were sharing and the emotion that people were expressing was definitely clear that he'd impacted a lot of people you know he was he basically he was a fixture at most of the LA concerts and especially KCRW sponsored events. And I regret, I, had, I do have regrets, I didn't participate more with that. So I just felt that sort of distinct difference, which is okay. Um, but I'm glad I could also be there for my friends because some of the people there were much more effective than I was. And one of the things I'm grateful to have the gift of is empathy. It sounds simplistic, but that's the thing is being able to hold space for people, friends, um, and some I didn't know so well, just to give them that encouragement and a whole space for them to love them and hold them in hugs when they need to just release was such a beautiful feeling. So a lot of things that really was happening today was a chance to, to really immerse in the human experience because, you know, we are human most of the time. <laughs> and so part of what I want to teach, share or inspire or invite you to look at is, do you want to go there yet? Right, I'm going to do this now because what showed up. Um, is what are you going to do this year about that? What are you going to do that's going to make an impact on people's lives? What are you going to do in your life that allows you to feel like you are complete, successful, impactful, or whatever that is for you? What is it that you're doing this year, for example, if you haven't already done it for the last 5, 10, 15 years, what is it that you're bringing to the table this year that will have people remembering you fondly? That's like a home assignment and a way to look at life. I mean, I'm looking at how I do that myself. I know that through my 960 plus Facebook lives, they will live on beyond me. 
presuming YouTube lasts longer than I do, <laughs> Facebook lasts longer than I do. But the thing is, it's like that's something I know that I've delivered content, support, inspiration, messages that will be there for everybody. And maybe forever if the platform, I mean, if we don't have a, you know, a cataclysm and all the, all the social media goes down, oh my God, what would be, how would we survive? But that idea about bringing us, bring something, you know, my book is something that lives on beyond me. I've got another book brewing because that's coming up. My online courses are, are there for people to use that I will be there in perpetuity. Perpetuity, that was the word. <laughs> Can you say the word right? So I know that the things I'm doing, and there's more I've got to bring this year. Guys. I mean, I'm launching my BFF Masterclass, which is a massive, immersive three-month journey, which I know is going to change a lot of people's lives. And I'm going to build that up into a point where it can run on its own. I mean, this one's going to be live with me interactive. So if you want to jump in, get in that one now, because it will become probably some sort of perennial or evergreen online course that people can use anytime. But these are these are things. Yes, I'm doing them because they're my my babies, my 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 deliveries, my service, my work. But the reality is, they are there for people to live, use, and have beyond my experience, beyond my range, beyond my life. And so, the question I'm offering to you is, or suggestion I'm offering to you is, are there things that you can do in your life that touch other people in a way that they that they'll be benefiting from you, whether you're here and after you're gone? It's something that's a consideration. One thing we're talking about today was about service, because again, much of us were there who were phone captains from the pledge drive and volunteers from the pledge drives for many, many years. And we used to do it twice a year, and I've, I've been doing it since well before 2000. It's been like 25 years. I would do the, I'd volunteer twice a year for a, 10 days at a time just to do the pledge drive. It was fun to do, it was my favorite station. And we were really bonding over that. And a lot of us know each other because we, we worked together for five, six, 10, 20 years. So let's go back that far. And again, it was only like twice a year but we were like family. And the good thing was because we saw each other twice a year, we didn't have a chance to fall out. <laughs> so we were all connected and all front. It was wonderful. And so, you know, you're asking him like, what do you do for volunteer stuff now? And I still volunteer, I thought I'd do tomorrow, every Sunday at Agape. That's my spiritual home. So I'm there every Sunday because it's part of my calling to volunteer, to serve, to make a difference, to, to add to people's lives. So my thought my question to you again I'm dropping questions for you this is not all answers give me questions too is what is it you can do as a volunteer as a contributor to other people whether it's through social media whether it's in person whether it's some sort of other orientation to give something what else can you do that will change people's lives for the better what else can you do that leaves a legacy behind you and what else can you do to raise the vibration of your life and those around you that's three questions for your homework I would recommend that you check out some of my offerings because I'm definitely inviting you to check out what I'm offering because I want to help you have more of what you want, more of what you want in your life. Um, I am a proponent, and that's what I'm talking about today with some of my friends, about real about self support. That's one of my priorities in my work and priorities to help my friends have more of what they want in their lives. So part of that is is self love. I talk about that a lot. So I've talked about that a lot. In fact, I was talking to my friends today. It's like even though I talk about love and relationships as my primary thing, it's kind of like the front door I go through is helping people have better relationships. But the side door I come through is helping people fall in love with themselves. You know, was that Jan? You're a caregiver for the elderly primarily. You continue to have the job. That's a beautiful gift, and it's a wonderful way to serve. That's wonderful. So thank you for sharing that. Um, that's a big calling as well. So. What I'm saying is, is that the side door of the work I do with, 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 with people is help them love themselves. Because every single relationship out there is improved when the relationship in here is improved. That's kind of obvious, but it's like it's not always easy to market that. But more lately and more, more frequently, I'm talking about how we've got to start here first without going, let me help you, better, help you have a better relationship. And by the way, I'm going to help you love yourself first, like secretly. No, I'm just saying, that's what I'm going to do. Which is why I created my self love meditation. So I'm going to put that in the comments for you to check out and get a copy yourself. It's, it's my voice guiding you morning and evening with a workbook. And my BFF Masterclass will be in the comments too, because both of those things are my passion projects right now. And it's my way to serve and give as well. Yes, I'm not giving them away. You do have to invest. But there are ways that you can get direct support from me. So those three questions I asked you earlier, I'd love to hear from you. You can put, come, put them in the comments below if you want. Um, or you can message me if you want to do it over social media. If you have any questions, you can reach me over social media. And the links I'll put in the comments after I sign off so you can check out the two things I'm talking about here. Feeling life fully is part of this journey, I know, and I'm realizing more and more how I get to embrace more of life. And I'm getting more, I'm getting more effective and better at being a participant in life. 
as well as an observer, because I am an observer of what's happening. That's where I've got my, that's where my skills come from, is from observing life. But also participating in, is not to be missed, not to be missed. So with that, thank you for watching my broadcast. Um, this is a quick one today, because it's been a long day. And um, I think that's everything I want to say. Yeah. So I, I do thank you for watching. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually a little bit later today because of the of the uh, memorial service or celebration of life, so to speak. However, I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually every day, but it is seven days a week every day. So it's not just, yeah. So normally 5 p.m. Pacific time, every single day of the week, seven days a week, you can join me every day and watch me live on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby to author. We can watch the replays. There's about 200 there. You can like my page, please. However, Facebook doesn't show them all. Thank you, Jen. I'm glad you liked it. Um, my, my, my passion is to make sure you can see all the broadcasts. So I do have a backup plan um, on my YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash user slash Barry, slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where every single one of these broadcasts lives happily for you to watch and enjoy. Um, you can search through by keywords, you can scroll through the titles and find what you're looking for and get some help, guidance, nudging, insight, and inspiration. As I said, those are there for everybody to watch anytime they want. So if you have questions, thoughts, message me. If you want to jump into one of my courses, let me know. And uh, please take care to watch, sorry, please take to heart what I mentioned today. And as my reminder to you, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.